Now I'd like to talk about the snare drum. Tuning. Semi-high, not too high. I prefer the stainless steel shell. This is a six and a half by 14 drum workshop or DW snare drum. There's something about the quality of the metal snare that I like. I play wood snares as well. It's really personal taste. What I'd like to talk about is how tight or loose the snare wires are tensioned. If you have them slightly loose, when you tap the drum quietly, it doesn't sound so choked. If I was to release the snares and then take this little knob here and tighten it up, this adjusts how tight the snares are. Now if I tap on the drum, it sounds like a really concert snare drum. So I might change the snares. In fact, I actually do. Generally, I set them not that tight because I want the drum to have some length, so I like it to be more relaxed. Maybe not quite like that. Something like that. If I'm playing sort of a second line New Orleans thing or sometimes with sambas where I want more of a looser snare, then I will soften the snares and mess around with buzzing and things of that nature. But generally, not too tight, not too loose, just right. Now, I want to talk about different areas to play. You can play near the edge, obviously ringing. In the center, much deader. I don't recommend you use muffling on the snare drum. Certainly nothing on top. It's very important to have a textured head, either a coated head or the fiber skin three heads, which I like for your brush playing, so you can get some sound when you're playing brushes. I like to adjust the tone of the snare drum by where I play it. If I play in the center of the drum, it's going to be drier, more articulate. If I play near the edge, Obviously a lot ringier. Your buzz rolls sound good at the edge. Not so good in the middle because of the deadness of the feel and sound. So if I'm comping, I'll sometimes move my left hand around. I like getting those different colors and tones. It's kind of a nice effect. The next thing I want to talk about is the important cross stick sound. Uh, a lot of drummers that will play match grip, obviously you can see I'm playing traditional. I do play both matched and traditional, but mostly traditional. So when they play the cross stick, they may hold it in the standard fashion, and you can still get a reasonably decent cross stick sound. But if you compare that sound, if I reverse the stick and hold it backwards, oh, big difference. So if you're playing a tune and you want to use the cross stick sound, but then you want to play the drums, you can just hold the stick backwards the whole time if you'd like. You don't have to keep juggling it. With traditional grip, the advantage is you can just turn the stick over into a match grip position and then turn it where it sits on top of your hand in the traditional grip position. Important thing, hold the stick all the way to the very tip. Lay the heel of your palm on the drum and then the fleshy padded portion of your palm rests on top of the stick. So you're pivoting off of your hand and the stick. When you hold it, use your thumb and index finger. I know you can't see the angle so well, but basically I'm just grabbing it with my first fingers. And then you can slide your hand up and across the drum. And by doing that, you're figuring out Oh, there we go. I'm looking for that real wood knock sound. I can keep my fingers off. It rings a little more, or I can bring them down so they actually help dry up and make that a very short staccato click sound. Very important sound for jazz, for cross sticks. Compare that if I don't have that quite where it needs to be. It's not a very good sound. There we go. If I go too far, it still doesn't sound very good. So it's important to just be messing around, experimenting until you get that right sound. Generally, it's about three, three and a half inches or so 
to get that nice crostic sound. Very important for bossa novas and some salsa beats, as you will see in the, the tracks on more jazz styles. The next thing I want to talk about is the stick shot. This is an important old school sound. Basically, I'm holding the stick, I'm planting the tip into the head, and I'm taking my right stick, and while it's pressed in a little bit, kind of a dead stroke, I'm tapping it. I'm not holding the stick very tight. You can move it up and down. But this is a great pickup note. So it's a really cool old school sound. So it's one that I really recommend you start incorporating into your jazz drumming. Next is the rim shot. Wow. Not this kind of rim shot, but an actual one where you try to really relax and see if you can find the tip and the rim at the same time. This is more of a staccato rim shot because the tip is near the center of the drum. Very brittle sounding, but if I move my tip toward the edge, I can start to add more ring, as you heard before when I play near the edge of the drum. So you can tune the length and the pitch of the rim shot depending upon how much stick you have hanging over the edge. This is a very important color. Uh, I use this sound when there's really high brass pops. Crack! High frequencies, that rim shot really cuts nicely. So it's definitely something that you'll see it, you'll hear it on some of the tracks, but it's something to sit down and just, without looking at the drum, you might start by playing the rim, and then you just gradually raise your arm. Notice I'm not just twisting my arm, but I'm actually dropping. That's a big component to the way I play, as you will see. I use lots of weight, lots of rebound. The whole goal is to get a really good tone out of every part of the drum set. Bass drum, snare drum, obviously the cymbals. With the toms, I really just try to play as though they're very large timpani. I really just almost release the stick, so I get this very round sound. <laughs> I can play again near the edges to get more overtone, more fundamental, more pointed sound in the middle. On this tom, I like to use the edge rim shot to sound kind of like timbales for Latin stuff. So those are some cool effects. Also with your cross stick, you can do some fun little stuff where you kind of flam, but you use your rim of your tom and the cross stick. So some cool little effects that you can do with this sound. Sometimes I'll even pitch it. So lots of neat little colors around the drum set. As far as the tuning of the toms, not too low. I used to tune on the low side and I realized in mixes I, the drums didn't project. They need to be somewhere in the middle of the low brass and the high brass, not too on the low end. This is a 12 inch tom. This is actually a 14 inch floor tom. And the top head is tuned possibly a little higher than the bottom head. And then I go around each tension rod to try to get the best possible sound. It's okay if they're not completely exact because you want to get sort of a good homogenized tone. You're getting the sound of the drum shell. You're getting the sound of the top and the bottom head. It's important to have two full heads to get a good tone. And other than that, it's really a matter of personal preference as to how high or low you're going to want to tune the drums. I'm just checking them out as I go into different rooms. Your drums are an acoustic instrument, which are affected by the acoustics of the room that you play in. If you played an electronic instrument, you could dial in the EQ electronically. We don't do that, so we might have to retune the drums a little up or a little down. And some of those things uh, are just the nature of the instrument as you move it from one room to the next. So keep in mind a loose grip. Be, be mindful of where you're striking the toms. As you're reading charts, you're looking over here and you may end up swinging and hitting near the edge or even sometimes rims. Once you get your setup, if you can just reach up and hit the toms without looking, then you've positioned the toms where your body likes to reach as opposed to maybe setting them up because they look like some other drummer's setup especially when the toms are too flat and you're raising up to try to play them. 
The main thing is you just want to relax and literally drop the sticks on the drums and cymbals and allow them to come back at you. Kind of like playing basketball on the drums and cymbals. So keep these things in mind.